what a healthy plant is made of. You don't hear much about this. It's kind of tough to read it because it isn't something that is readily put out there. If you don't know what a plant is made of, how do you know what it needs? I have just a few books here from a large collection that I bought many, many years ago. And these books date back to the 1850s. The reasons I look at these old books is because information from these books was printed before there were fertilizer and chemical companies trying to sell us stuff. This particular book was uh, printed in 1855, and the author is John P. Norton. He's a professor of scientific agriculture at Yale College. And he talks about the organic elements of plants. And if I may, I'd just like to read to you a little bit. And this is in the old, wonderful English that used to be spoken. The organic part in plants is by far the largest, as is plainly to be seen on burning any form of vegetable matter. It ordinarily constitutes from 90 to 97 pounds in every hundred. During the burning, this solid organic matter disappears. It is driven off into the atmosphere until nothing but a little ash remains. That which has gone, then, has evidently become air. It is easy to see that this part of the plant can easily and can only have been formed from air at first. Such a conclusion may seem very strange at first. I wonder if John was a disruptor. I'm sorry, I'll go back. But a little reflection will show that we can arrive at no other. When we have made up our minds to this, it becomes important to know what kind of air it is that forms so large a part of our plant, or is there more than one kind of air? They knew this in 1855, and he goes on to tell the exact numbers that I told you in 1855. So if 90 to 97 pounds out of every 100 is comprised of the air, why do we need so stinking many chemicals and fertilizer? Aha! You already have the answer, because the air is no longer getting into the ground. The air has to get into the soil so we can have the carbon cycle. 